Well, you know you guys have to wait. You don't have to wait a minute. Yeah, I want you guys to, to make sure you say hello to the fans. Well, hello, friends. Mark Holmes here. And as always, I want to thank you guys for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Blue Sports Report. Without you guys, this does not work without you guys. And we are out here for our afternoon feeding frenzy where I come out here, my koi start swimming around like crazy because they want to get fed. And it looks kind of frenzy, frenzious, if you ask me. So, some news out there right now in the NFL. We have another quarterback who is now on the commissioner's COVID list. Now, the COVID list is not saying that you have tested positive. It's just that you've either tested positive or you've been quarantined. And Gardner Minichu, for the Jacksonville Jaguars, he's now on the list along with Matthew Stafford. And we're also having word that Geronimo um, Allison has now decided to opt out for the Lions. So if you're a Lions fan right now, you're looking at this saying that your quarterback is going to be late reporting and hopefully doesn't have any issues with coronavirus. Your, one of your best wide receivers is opting out. You've got to look at this and say, we're going to have some issues or we're going to have definitely a slow start. For the Cowboys... Thus far, keep your fingers crossed, um, we are having very minimal um, things to slow us down. Our veterans have now reported to the star. And with the deadline for opting out being Tuesday or Wednesday, you know, it looks like what question mark we had, which was to Marcus Lawrence, looks like he gonna be there. So that's great news for our Cowboys. And other than two guys who weren't expected to have a real role in the Dallas Cowboys, we don't have anybody thus far testing positive for the COVID um, disease. Now, you know, this is going to be a season like we've never had before. This season may come down to who tests positive and who doesn't. Now, I've gotten a couple of different questions and things that are kind of interesting. Um, Somebody had asked, if a player opts out and the team wins the Super Bowl, does that player who opted out still get a ring? That's a great question. Now, it depends on the team themselves. I remember seeing Ron Jaworski in Miami, and it's hard to believe that it was just seven months ago I was in Miami after all hell is broken loose with the world. I remember seeing Ron Jaworski, who was there, wearing a 2017 Super Bowl ring. Now typically, what a team will do is, they'll give everybody who's part of the organization a ring. So, you know, even Gertrude, who's a receptionist, would get a ring. You know, the grounds guys would get a ring. Well, with most organizations, I can't guarantee if Jerry Jones is buying one for everybody or not. Hell. You're the New England Patriots. <laughs> Even Putin got a ring. You know that? Putin got a ring. Well, he, he kind of stole his. He kind of said, said to Robert Kraft, let me see your ring. Thank you very much. And walked away. So, I don't know, but I would assume if you were a named player on the team, a guy who still has a contract with the team, and the team won the Super Bowl, that they would give you a ring. I, I don't know, but that's a great hypothetical question. One thing we do know is the NFL is basically treating you like you weren't part of the team in the season because you opted out. They're giving you the cap room for that season, and which I believe that's part of the reason why New England is having a lot of players that are all of a sudden sitting out and they've got cap room. And you know how the New England Patriots are. They always try to juice the system. And they may be looking at this as a way they can juice the system for down the road. Get a high draft pick, save some cap run money, so that way they can make a run at free agents that won't really have a chance to make a whole lot of money. Because teams like the Eagles, for example, I'm not trying to, to hit on you guys or anything like that, but the Eagles come next year right now in committed contract are at $263 million. And if the cap does go down to the floor of 175, 
they got issues. You can't see them being able to make a lot of free agent moves. In fact, you're going to have to see them make a lot of uh, restructuring or a lot of people getting cut. So that's the dynamic that I think the Patriots are playing on. We can have cap room next year to be able to take advantage of bringing in more players, get a high pick, and reload <coughs> reload this team for another dynasty. They have a long game now. So, we have had minimal interruptions, which is good because we have so much that's changed in this team. We have pretty much with the exception of three coaches. We got Leon, 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 Leon left returning, of course, on the defensive line. We got Kellen Moore, and um, who am I forgetting? Who am I forgetting? I'm forgetting one other coach. But other than that, every position's got somebody new. So you're going to look at this and say, okay, we need to have you guys here as much as possible to understand what we're planning on doing as a team collectively. If we can continue not have players opt out, if we can continue not to have anybody come down with COVID, we got a great opportunity for this season. I look at the shape that Dak Prescott's in right now. He looks like he is in great shape. You even look at Zeke Elliott. Zeke looks like he's trimmed down a little bit. You even look at that film that the Cowboys put out with everybody in their uniform. Even, even the man who's never met a donut that he would turn down the man who literally ran to the end zone with Zeke Elliott because he thought there were some Dunkin' Donuts there. Looney Tunes. Is it my imagination? But does Joe Looney look like he has lost some of the belly? He may be looking at this as, now, this is my team. This is my chance, my opportunity to really set myself up to really get paid and really be the new field general here for Travis Frederick. I'm excited. I, I, I'm excited as can be. And uh, I just can't wait till September. On a different note, it seems like some of you Eagle fans out there are a little extra trolling right now. I'll call you back, bro. Um, it seems like you Eagle fans are extra deep right now on the channel talking a whole lot of smack. And it seems like some of you didn't like me talking about your Moses, Philly 500, and reminding you that, yes, you got one game. You got one victory. You forgot about the 37 to... 10 ass whipping that we had early in the season. You seem to forgot about the two victories we had the year before. I know you guys have a very short memory, but it seems like you guys are a little salty. Am I wrong on that? You know, you come into my house, you talk smack, you call me everything but a child of God. And then you expect me not to come back at you? Come on, man. Man up. Stop being a whiny little bitch, Eagle fans. I don't know about you, but I'm ready for the season to get on because I'm here to put a foot in your ass. Right now, i to take care of my babies here. Hey, guys. Soon, wait. So we here, fishy, fishy, fishies. Here, fishy, fishy, fishies. So we come on, come on, fellas. Hello, fellas. How you doing? Say hello to the camera. What's up? What's up, guys? What's up? What's up? Hey, 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 hey. How y'all doing? The water feels extra wet today, guys. 
Alright. Here you go. Here's your middle. Come on. <laughs> Damn, that water feels good. I should go for a swim. I don't know how they'd like that. Thing. I'm Mark Holmes, and I hope you guys are having a great Sunday. We don't have many of them left without football. I'll see you. You know, I'll see you later. They look happy.